I just need to show you something. For a 30 year old car, like look at the condition. It's still like really good under here. You know, I'm really happy with the way this looks. Mind you, I've kept it in the garage for ever since I've had it and I've had it for quite some time. So it's never really seen outdoor weather, which is amazing. So that's really good. I'm really happy about that. Now, for me to continue on and I'm trying to clean around the exhaust and stuff like that. And, it's, and I'm saying, I'm thinking to myself, if I'm gonna paint underneath, I wanna paint it properly. I don't wanna try and paint around things and stuff like that. So now I've decided to take the exhaust off. So I'm gonna undo the cat, take the cat off. I had to take the plug out because the plug's not coming off from here. It's just too, it's siliconed on and it's not coming off. So I undid the plug from inside and fed it through the bottom of the, of the floor. Now I'm gonna take the cat off, take the full exhaust off, and then I'm gonna go up the top where the, where the engine is and uh, where the turbo is and take off the three bolts on the turbo and take the dump pipe out. And that way I can get to on top of it and I can really sort of get in there, clean it and paint it and then put it all back together. And I think that's gonna be better. So let's take the exhaust off. I've stripped my whole car. I went from pulling the gearbox out to fixing it to stripping the hole underneath. Ah, oh, it's crazy. But you have to do these things, especially if you want to do things properly like paint underneath. I didn't want to paint around the exhaust and all the rest of it. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take it off. It's off. Now to get back to cleaning underneath the car so we can get ready for paint. All right, let's go. Guys, I've done it. I cleaned the hole underneath of the car and this is how it came out. It came out sick. There are little to no rust spots. There's one here, there's one here. There's a little bit of a rust hole here. That's behind the driver's side. When you're driving with the windows down, water just sort of sits behind your seat. And over the time it, you know, just sort of eats away at the metal. Now, I used to drive with my windows down a lot. Like you can't not drive these cars without your windows down, you know? So other than that, like the rest of the car underneath came out sick. The other thing I did is I took the fuel lines out. As you can see, the fuel lines are hanging down, and that's because I didn't want to paint over the fuel lines. I wanted to paint behind the fuel lines. It gives it more of an OEM look. Plus, you know, when you paint over the fuel lines, people start to question, oh, why'd you paint over the fuel lines? Is there something wrong with the undercarriage? And there's, no, there's nothing wrong with the undercarriage. It's in great nick for a 30 year old car. I wanted to freshen it up. And by me doing this and painting it, it will add another 20 years to the undercarriage of the car, you know? So that's it, I can't wait. So I'm just gonna hit these rust spots with a wire brush. Um, just to you know, get as much surface rust off as possible. The only thing I'm going to do is with these holes, I'm going to use seam sealer just to patch them. And once I just seam seal over the top of them, then I'm going to paint it. And I can't wait. Let's get to hitting these rust spots. sealed with a seam sealer came out pretty nice there's a few ways that you could do it you could do 
what I did, you know, using SeamZilla, I found it to be the easiest, most convenient way for me right now. Um, however, if there was bigger rust patches that needed to be cut out, you would weld them. So you would probably cut them out, cut a plate in there and weld them together. So, but luckily I didn't have that issue. I thought it looked pretty good. Um, there was only one little spot here, one little spot there, and the seam sealer is covering it anyway. Now that he's ready to go for paint. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mask up, you know, everything around. I wanna cover the hoist so the hoist doesn't get paint on it. And we're gonna hit it with a spray can. I got my trusty metal cover spray can. It's an epoxy enamel. Um, it inhibits rust and corrosion, and it's the same metal paint that I used on the inside of the car, and I found it to be fantastic. And the reason why I'm using a spray can and not an actual spray gun with a compressor is because we're underneath the car, it's a bit of a tight space, you know, there are some tight spaces in there. So I thought I'll hit it with a metal cover spray can and we'll get the same results. So time to mask it up and let's paint it. I'm pumped, let's go. that turned out that is awesome there's a few little touch-ups i need to do but um that's granted um with black black shows everything as well so any imperfections that you've got you'll see it but who cares at the end of the day it's underneath the car and it's a drift car so i'm not concerned about any imperfections it's not going to be immaculate it's going to get thrashed so I'm happy about that. I'm stoked about that, actually. Um, the other thing, I've only painted up until the chassis rails. Obviously, I can't paint on this side or the other side because of the platforms of the hoist. So I can do that while the car's on the ground, and just jack it up and put it on stands and stuff. But other than that, this came out pretty sick. <sighs> that made me happy. That was good. I had fun. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.